What do you do after you either grew up in Denver or you moved there and lived there for 20 years after living in near Philadelphia? And then you move abroad for several months and travel Europe, Spain, and France. And then you live in Las Vegas for two years. You move to Ohio. <laughs> and that's the subject <laughs> of today's Queer Money Podcast episode number 413, the most affordable LGBTQ plus friendly city in Ohio. Right. We are really excited to learn about the results of this state because- it's ours now. <laughs> it's our home state right now. And so on with the show. The mission of Queer Money is to financially empower the LGBTQ plus community. Join us in thanking Capital One for supporting that mission. All right. So welcome back to the discussion about our home state, Ohio, and LGBTQ friendliness. And to be honest, John and I were completely blown away with how LGBTQ friendly cities in this state are. As a matter of fact, it has the most cities so far in any state that we've reviewed that have a 100 on the HRC MEI index. But there's one city <laughs> that did not make the cut. Yes. So six got a one. There are six cities that got a 100, six out of the eight cities. The one city or one of the cities that didn't make it, our home city, Toledo. But We're gonna we fix are going to try to change that. <laughs> yes, exactly. We're going to gate up here. Yeah. And, and the other thing is, is that, um, uh, that none of the cities, uh, in Ohio, with the exception of uh, two higher end suburbs, um, actually have a cost of living that's above the national average. So overall, the state of Ohio, there are lots of cities that are low cost and LGBTQ friendly, according to HRC's MEI index. And I'll say that's our experience. So we, so we gave a prelude the other week where we said our experience does not necessarily mirror the numbers that we're gleaning um, from these different reports that we're collating. Um, Toledo is a very LGBTQ plus friendly city. We went to the Pride uh, last August or September. August. August. Um, and it was very queer. And almost everywhere we go, we see um, progressive pride flags. We see uh, Black Lives Matter signs, flags all over the place. Uh, it's a very progressive and, and liberal city. Um, so even though we Toledo didn't get a 100, it's still, you know, quite comfortable. There are places that we actually have held hands here and we thought that wasn't going to be uh, going to be possible. So while we're walking down the street, while we're walking down the street. Yeah. Not just, not, not just, just that. Right. So I think, you know, as we said earlier, uh, you know, we're, we're pulling together these numbers to help uh, hopefully provide some direction for folks, but um, definitely make sure you do your follow-up and definitely go visit some of these cities before you decide to move there. Because what is, it feels like on the ground may not necessarily be exactly what the numbers portray. And that's kind of what we're finding out in our own experience with Ohio. That said, uh, Cleveland, Akron, Cincinnati, Dayton, Dublin, um, and even Columbus are uh, all rank pretty well. And the numbers uh, aren't too um, dis disparate in terms of uh, their affordability and their LGBTQ plus friendliness. So you almost kind of can't really go wrong with any of those cities. Um, some of them, as David said, are a little bit more expensive, especially the burbs. Um, so we'll dive into that here shortly. So all that said, David, who is the runner up? <laughs> the runner up is Akron, a place that John and I have been to several times yeah. and actually a great little city. We uh, um, have spoken to, uh, been to the University of Akron several times, spoken to a couple organizations there, including their LGBTQ plus, uh, you know, little uh, sorority fraternity organization <laughs> what are they called just L lgbtq plus organization, organization campus yeah. organization so what are some things about akron that brought it up to the the, the sec being second on the list well again it is one of those cities that did get a 100 i think that has a lot to do with it being a college town yeah that helps yeah and it was the had the lowest rents out of all the cities that we looked at at $1,117, that is considerably lower than the national average, more than $800 a month cheaper than the national average. The home values uh, for came in number three for the state at $193,000 uh, for your average home, which again is well below the national average. And that probably those things combining with other costs of living items um, brought the cost of living in at 87 0.5% of the national average. So basically you're getting almost a 13% discount for living in this 
this city. Although it does have lower median and average incomes at 53,000 and 70,000 respectively. That is one of the things that kept it from being number one. Yeah, exactly. Tired of all the credit card offers you get from your current credit scoring app? Download CreditWise by Capital One today to avoid them. So John, who's our winner? Wow, David. <laughs> Cleveland rocks. Cleveland rocks. I don't know if that dates me. It might date me at this point, but Cleveland is our winner. Uh, it, again, is got a 100 on the HRC MEI. Home values came in at number four, averaging about $202,000 per property. Rents are also in the middle at $1,321 on average a month. Um, it has the lowest cost of living at 77.2%. So that is, I mean, we just did some high, Oregon a yes. while ago, and that was like 153%, <laughs> yeah. right? So this is a huge discount. Yeah. Um, and it, it, very LGBTQ plus friendly in all of the cities that we've been to in Ohio, including uh, Cleveland, uh, Akron, uh, and Columbus, and Toledo, all well, the places that we've been to. Yeah, one of the things I find so interesting about uh, this with Cleveland is that um, the cost of living for the state, or the, I'm sorry, for the city is lower than Akron. The incomes are Just higher. Just over Akron. So yeah. median income is about $53,000 a year, and the average income is about $71,000 per year. So um, you know, it's definitely something to take into consideration, uh, the higher potential uh, for income. Yeah. And we're finding that this is the case with a number of the kind of the Midwest Rust Belt areas is that there's uh, the cost of living is quite a bit lower than that. And we've been reading other data that kind of helps show why this is. And a lot of it has to do with housing costs. So why does Cleveland rock? Well, for reasons, David. <laughs> yeah. Um, Ohio, it is Ohio's gay capital. It is the home to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and the Cleveland Art Museum. It does have its own pride, and that is the first weekend in June. The city itself was very supportive in hosting the 2014 Gay Games. And the October 2022 issue and, and October 2022 issue of the New York Times said that Cleveland is building a gay district near its 30,000 square foot field house that is complete with restaurants, kitchen classes, and gardening services. So they're actually... I think yeah. doing a lot to try to to engender themselves to the LGBT community, not just with the the uh, the the requirements that the city has, but actually reaching out and providing things for the community. Yeah, we need to go visit Cleveland again soon. Yeah. So many of you may be, might be asking, why not Columbus, right? We all have all heard about how LGBTQ plus friendly Columbus is, and it's like the retail mecca of the United States. Uh, well, unfortunately, and it's great. Like, we've been to it several times. Short North is amazing. We could spend days upon days there. Um, but one of the problems with uh, Columbus is it, it is a more expensive city uh, relative to the other cities in Ohio. Uh, rents are high at $1,421 a month on average, and housing costs are, or uh, home values are also quite high at $284,000 uh, on average for property. Cost of living is 95.2%, so you're bumping up closer to that, uh, that, that average of 100% percent uh, for the national average. Um, and then, uh, but it's not the most expensive. As David said earlier, um, none of the cities were the most expensive, but some of the suburbs were. Uh, so the suburbs of Columbus and Cleveland are the ones you probably want to avoid if you want to try to keep your costs down. Um, but like we said earlier, you probably almost can't go wrong in, in any city in of these yeah, cities that we I, I'm, I'm really pleasantly surprised. I'm happy to hear that, to see this. I just wish that this would have an impact on the state's overall political outlook and uh, yeah. things that are happening so here. Hopefully that's a change that'll happen soon. But in the meantime, congratulations, Cleveland and Akron, you all earned it. Start your journey to financial independence with a checking and savings account that doesn't nickel and dime you with fees. Get a Capital One 360 checking or a 360 performance savings account at Capital One today. Thanks again for joining us for another episode of the Queer Money podcast bonus series around LGBTQ plus friendliness and affordable cities across the great country that we live in. All 50 states, we're going to be looking at them. So next week, we're looking at one that actually kind of scares us a little bit when it comes to how they're ranking on the MEI index. And that is where my family is originating from North Dakota. 
Yeah, the numbers were a little bit depressing, so wait till you hear that. But if you'd like to see the results of all of the cities that we're analyzing throughout this series, please go to queermoneypodcast.com forward slash cities or click the link in your podcast player. In the meantime, have a great weekend. Mm-hmm.